You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. My name is Dennis. I live in a mobile home in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. A friend of mine called me just a little bit ago, and he said he's on his way over with some steaks, some beef tenderloin steaks that he bought. And he wants to make something called steaks au poivre, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a French way of cooking steaks. What you do is you break up, you cr crush up some whole peppercorns, and then you press the steaks after you salt them. You press them into the peppercorns, then you pan sear them and cook them to whatever level of wellness you want. And then skim the fat off the pan, and you use the juices in the pan with cream and some brandy to make a sauce to go over the top. So this sounds like it's going to be pretty good. I got to go shopping. I got to do some prep work. But there's one thing I want to do first, because here in Southern California, our temperatures are supposed to climb up into the low to mid 90s today. If you're on the Celsius system, it's up above 32 degrees Celsius. Now I've got a friend up the street who has a lemon tree and she's always telling me, come over and get lemons, come over and get lemons, because she just throws them in the trash. They fall off the tree. She doesn't use them. So I want to show you what I like to do most on a hot day. And it's like on a really hot day, I can't get enough of this stuff. I can't tell you how many times I've done this. Take some fresh lemon right off the tree. And I've got a strainer here that I'm using to catch any seeds or any pulp that I don't want in my glass. And with lemons this size, I don't care if I get some on the counter. And I find that one half of a lemon is good enough for me. I'll save that one for later. I don't like things too lemony because I'm not real fond of fl sour flavors. Okay. And then a couple of tablespoons of sugar, a couple of teaspoons of sugar. I like it a little on the sweet side, again, because I don't care for sour flavors. Get some water in there. You can hear that background noise. Yes, that's a jet going overhead. I live near the airport. Get some ice in there. Put this back in the refrigerator. And that is my lemonade. I'll probably go through at least two glasses of this today. Oh. They sell lemonade mix in the store, but nothing beats the flavor of fresh made lemonade with fresh off the tree picked lemons. Okay, I got to go finish my lemonade and then I'm going to go do some shopping for our steak au poivre today. We are going to want vegetable side dishes to go with our steaks and when I was at the store they had a really good price on ears of corn. So I'm going to show you how I prepare a quick and easy corn on the cob. You've heard the expression, when it rains, it pours. Meanwhile, my neighbor has come over. They received a bushel, a big basket of fresh corn on the cob directly from the, somebody's field. I like these so much. They sent over a whole bunch of ears of corn for me, so I'm going to use these instead of the ones that I bought at the store. Now, how I like to prepare my corn is in the microwave oven. And I have a trick for doing this. First of all, feeling for the top end of the ear. I'm going to cut the top off. 
looks good. And then feeling for the bottom end, I want to cut the, the husks attached down here on the stem, right? I want to cut just into the ear itself so that all of the, that looks good, all of the husks are now separated from the stalk. That'll make it easier to peel it off later. And then I want to put a little piece of plastic wrap around the ear just to hold the husks in place. Because what I want to do is I want to soak these in water. I don't have anything big enough that I can put both ears in. But I have these glass bread pans. Let's see, take out another ear. I love the look of this corn. The reason why I want to soak these in water is I want to get some moisture that the microwave can use for steaming the corn. That looks like a good place to cut right there. Yeah, I'm just checking to make sure that none of the, ta none of the husks are attached to the stalk. And then the same thing, a little a bit of plastic just to hold the husks on in place while it's soaking in the water. Okay, so there are my two ears of corn now. I'm going to fill these with water. I don't know how long to let them sit in water, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just to give time for the water to seep in under the husks. My corn now has been soaking for a while. And what I did was I even pressed down on the corn husk while it was under the water and bubbles came out, which would indicate I'm forcing air out and therefore water's gonna go in. So now I'm gonna stand these up on end just to let some excess water drain out. It's already starting to collect there. I don't want too much water. I want just enough moisture to provide water for these to steam. After these sit for a minute or two, I'm going to start wrapping them up in some plastic that I've set up here. All right, I'm ready to wrap these. I can take that little ribbon of plastic off. I'm just gonna wrap these up in plastic wrap, no vent holes for steam. The steam will find its own way out. And I go corner to corner like I would when I'm wrapping an egg roll. I always do this. I put a string on it and the string doesn't, by twisting it around, the string doesn't do any good. By the time this has all been heated in the microwave, this plastic is all stuck together and the only way to get it off is to cut it off. Okay, so there's one of them. I'm gonna wrap my other one and then these will be ready to go into the microwave when I get that wrapped, we'll talk about cooking time. As far as how long to soak that corn in water, I don't know that there's a minimum or a maximum amount of time. I do want the husks to be wet because when I microwave the corn, that moisture is going to be creating the steam that is going to help to cook the corn. Now in the meantime, I'm going to be preparing a second vegetable. I know a lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts. Nobody is indifferent to Brussels sprouts. They either love them or they hate them. My friend and I both love Brussels sprouts. So that's what I'm going to start working on next. So there they are. One of the most despised vegetables in the world. When you buy Brussels sprouts, if you can pick them up, pick them out individually, try to get them all roughly the same size because then they'll cook evenly. These are rather large. They didn't have any small ones. Sometimes the store has small ones. Sometimes they have large ones. When I have these larger ones, I quarter them before I cook them. I'm trying to get some of these outer leaves off because they're a little bit bruised or brown. And that's all I do is just clean them up, get the outer leaves off. And in this case, I'm just gonna 
quarter them. And what I'm going to do with these, we always have them the same way. I saute them in a skillet with olive oil. Not extra virgin olive oil, just regular cooking olive oil. Because it has a high smoke point. And we like to have them sauteed to the point where they're just starting to brown. They're well cooked. That's one thing I've noticed about Brussels sprouts, is in order to taste good, they really should be cooked thoroughly. And then we garnish them after they're cooked with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil for flavoring, and then garnish them with some shredded Romano or Parmesan cheese. So I have quite a few to do here, more than I need, I think. But as I said, we do like Brussels sprouts. I'm going to put my ears in one of these two glass bread dishes. This should fit in my microwave fine. As far as how long to cook these, it depends upon how powerful your microwave is. I have an old one and it's not very powerful. So I'm probably going to go three minutes, then I'm going to turn these over so that they cook evenly and then go another three minutes. If you have a really good microwave, a fairly new one that has a high wattage to it, maybe two minutes and then two minutes. I'm going to figure a total of six minutes. If I have to, I'll even go a, an additional minute or two. What I want to see is, I want to see steam building up underneath. I'll see this plastic start to bubble up as the steam is trying to escape. That's an indication that my water, of course, is boiling in there, and that steam is what is cooking my corn. In the meantime, my friend has arrived with the steaks. He bought beef loin, tenderloin, USDA choice grade. These are going to be good steaks. Now we have to let these sit out at room temperature for about 30 minutes or so just to let them come up in temperature a little bit. In the meantime, I have some prep work to do to prepare these steaks au poivre. As Dennis said, we're going to be making steak au poivre, which is steak with peppercorns. So for this recipe, you're going to need four filet mignons. These are going to be cut about an inch and a half or four centimeters thick, and you're going to add crushed peppercorns to this. So you'll need about two tablespoons of, of peppercorn that you're going to make into a crust for the for the steaks. We're going to coarsely crush two tablespoons of peppercorns. Now, you can use a mortar and pestle, but I'm just going to simply use a plastic bag, put my peppercorns in here, and get the air out so the bag doesn't rupture. And I'm going to crush them coarsely using this here, the, the whacker spoon. And I'm just going to So we've crushed our peppercorns and I'm going to pour them into this bowl so you can see about the, the coarseness that we're aiming for here. So here you see we have fairly coarse chunks. You know, your largest chunks are going to be probably about a no more than a, a little bit less than half a peppercorn or a third of a peppercorn. You're going to obviously have smaller pieces, but you don't want your, your largest pieces. You want to be, you know, about a third or a quarter of a peppercorn. You don't want anything bigger than that, uh, but you don't want anything ground up too, too small that you end up with ground pepper. Before we put our peppercorns on, we're going to actually season our steak with salt because they don't come pre-salted. We're going to use a, just a kosher salt. So you don't want to use a too uh, too fine a salt because it, 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 oh, you can oversalt your meat, and also the kosher salt draws the moisture out a little bit more and gives it a, a more nuanced flavor at when the moisture reabsorbs into the steak. So we're just going to you know lightly salt each side, and if you need to add some sea salt or something at the table, it's easier to. It's better to undersalt something than it is to oversalt something. Just flip it over. Okay. 
So we're going to spread our peppercorns out across this, this, this uh, plate here. Try to get this fairly even. Not making too much of a mess. And then we're just going to take our steaks and we're going to press them into the, into the peppercorns and just coat our steaks with the peppercorns. Just like that. If I need more peppercorns, you can always ground up some more. But I should have just enough. Let's get a few scraggling pieces. And there we are, our coated steaks. I'm going to start cooking my sprouts here. So I have a skillet heating on the stove. And I'm putting some clarified butter in there because it has a higher smoke point than regular butter, which burns at a low temperature. And then this is pure olive oil, not extra virgin olive oil, for the same reason. It has a higher smoke point. I use extra virgin olive oil for flavoring. All right, so that's plenty hot enough now. I'll put my Brussels sprouts in there. Don't cringe, it's not that bad. <laughs> I don't think it's amusing that people don't love Brussels sprouts as much as I do. I know a lot of people who do. And fortunately, Eric, who's here doing the steaks, he likes them a lot. So now I'm gonna cook these. I know Brussels sprouts taste best when they're cooked all the way through, really tender. And the way we like them is cooked long enough so that they're even starting to brown a little bit or even quite a bit on the outside. So I'm going to be turning these once in a while as they continue to cook. And then I'll dress them with extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of Romano cheese afterwards. So a few of these, as you can see, they're just starting to brown. If you have large Brussels sprouts and you want to help them along a little bit to reduce the cooking time, you can put a cover on them too, and that will help. So as you can see, these Brussels sprouts are just about done now. I'm getting quite a bit of browning, which is how we like them. I started these off on medium heat. And then as they started to cook and brown, some of the moisture started to cook off. I started lowering my heat. Right now they're cooking over medium low heat. And I did cover these for part of the time to help to steam those. So I'm getting ready now to plate these very soon. So again, I've got some of my, my clarified butter melted in this pan. Put again some pure olive oil. And this should be just about up to temperature. And you want to cook your steaks about four minutes per side, but I'm going to be using a quick read digital thermometer to check on my internal temperature because we want these medium rare, probably closer to rare than to medium. My steaks now have been cooking for four minutes. Oh, look how beautiful that is. All right.
Now from this point forward I'm going to be using a digital thermometer to check my internal temperature. When they're at the right temperature they're going to get taken off the stove and tented to hold for a few minutes. So I want to bring these up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit at 49 degrees Celsius. This one's already too high. That has to come off. That's the thin piece of steak. These are a lot lower because they're thicker. So I'm going to get this steak off right away. In the meantime, I poured off the excess oil, but I left the fond in the pan. So what I'm going to do now is I'm turning my heat off. I'm going to pour cognac in the pan and then ignite. Then shake that. <laughs> you really need a big kitchen to do this. Not a mobile home kitchen. But there is my flambe. I've brought my pan, my skillet, back up to medium heat. And now I'm going to add one cup, I believe that's 237 milliliters, of heavy cream. And then I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful already? Look at the color in that. See, that's the fond in the bottom of the pan that the cream is now lifting up. I'm going to bring this to a boil and cook it for like five to six minutes to let that thicken. And that'll be the sauce for our steaks. There's my timer on my stove. This has been going now for five minutes. And you can see that's not like a gravy, it's a sauce, but can you see how it leaves a coating on that spatula? That's at the coats of spoon stage. So now that's ready and we are ready to start plating our dinner. I'm going to consider my Brussels sprouts done now. This dish is a little bit large for my needs, but it'll work. And how we typically like these is the first thing I want to do is dress them. This is now extra virgin olive oil. As I said, I like to use extra virgin olive oil for flavoring. And then sprinkle some salt on them. Some freshly ground black pepper. And then finally, I know we Americans, we like to put cheese on things. We like to have them with a little bit of freshly grated Romano cheese on top. And that's it. That is our Brussels sprouts. I'll keep these warm until they're ready to go on the table. I want you to see these before they deflate too much. They're just starting to deflate. But these are puffing up that steam building up inside. I can smell the aroma of cooking corn. I'm actually going to cook these for, I think, for just two more minutes. These went in for six minutes. Three minutes, I switched them. Another three minutes, I'm going to do another two minutes on these, and these should be cooked well enough, ready to eat. How's that for puffy? All puffed up. It's even steaming up the door of my microwave. Okay, so how I would do these, I'm not even going to try to lift this plastic off. I think it's easier to just cut it carefully, keeping your fingers away from the steam. All right. Take the plastic off. That is hot. And then start working the husks off. And 
And see, by cutting it down off the end like that, it's really easy. Okay, I got a little bit of sticking right there. I didn't c cut quite far enough. And the other thing is, by cooking it this way, the silk lifts off really easily as well. There goes a jet overhead. A little bit of ambiance. You know this is a trailer park and not a studio in New York City, right? So there's my silk coming off. Look at that. That is still very hot to handle, but there is a beautiful ear of corn on the cob cooked in the microwave. I have my other one to do here, and then the corn will be ready to eat. So how I would plate this, I would put a piece of my steak on our plate. And then put a few of my beautifully browned sautéed Brussels sprouts. We love Brussels sprouts this way. On one side, here is an ear of my corn. And then finally, our sauce over the steak. <laughs> Doesn't that look fantastic? Clean up the plate. But there it is. Steak au poivre. The last step is to see how good that tastes. All right. Both of us are so looking forward to this. I cut a little piece off for myself here. And it's so pink on the inside. It's just the right, the right wellness. Oh, that is very good. And by the way, I did adjust that sauce for salt, although you didn't see me do it. My Brussels sprout. Oh. Cooked to perfection. Okay. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my steak au poivre. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.